exciting information to share with all of the uh, webcast uh, participants uh, today. Uh, I'm going to give you just a very, very <clears throat> quick um, setup of what we're going to talk today, and then we'll go straight into uh, the, uh, the actual webcast. So uh, I'm going to talk very quickly about uh, GUX mission and its core activities. Very quickly, for those of you do not, uh, that don't know uh, GUEC uh, as well as uh, our, our members, uh, then we go straight into events. We talk about why our events are unique, a uh, couple of numbers and where our events are happening. And then we go straight into the uh, calendar and then a profile of our uh, events. And then after that, um, we, we talk about our exciting projects that we have lined up for next year. And then that's the moment where uh, Joyce and Karen will be uh, joining the, the, the talk. First Joyce and then Karen. And then I come back with um, sponsorship opportunities and all of the benefits and an idea of cost ranges. And right after that, we go into the Q&A, okay? So without uh, further ado, let's uh, let's have a look at uh, quickly about uh, GWEC. Um, so let's have a look at the GWEC core activities, but first our mission. Um, I can summarize it into one sentence, which is opening up emerging markets uh, for business. And, uh, and that's basically a three tier approach. So we identify and establish a connection with national, local governments and regulatory bodies. That's the first uh, uh, um, approach that we do, the first step. The second step is to create or strengthen the local win association. And the third step would be to build the business environments for uh, the industry. And uh, that after that, we, uh, we have our core activities, which you can, you can see on your screen now. So six core activities that uh, we support our members and of course the industry. So market intelligence, advocacy and policy. We do a lot of collaboration where we share best practices with our uh, stakeholders. We uh, organize summits and conferences. Uh, we also do a lot of business matchmaking and capacity building, okay? Uh, now, this is very quickly about uh, GWEC. Let's uh, dive into what uh, the, the, the main purpose of, of today's webcast, which is to talk about the events, the activities, and why it's, uh, it's, it's very important uh, to share this information ahead of time so that companies and everyone that's involved in comms, marketing, and business development can share this information within your companies so that we so that everybody can start planning to participate in our activities for 2020. So don't go away, stay tuned. We've got a lot of interesting information to share with you. So why are GWEC events so unique? Why are they so in interesting? Why are they so important? Okay, three reasons. Uh, reason number one is that we attract all of the high level government stakeholders to our events and we prepare a very interesting uh, conference program so that we can influence regulation and policy. Okay. Reason number two, um, the whole industry knows that we organize events for the industry. So this attracts a lot of the leaders and investors and stakeholders from local and global market. So everybody knows that if they want to do business at an event, they need to come to GWEC events. And then when I say GWEC events, I mean emerging markets. Okay. And that comes, and that takes me to the third uh, reason why GWEC events are so unique is we have stakeholders, we have uh, industry leaders, and then we have all of the participants and that creates a huge business environment for companies to obviously do business or further their business in wind, okay? Now going on a bit more further into events, where are these events going to happen? So first, just two numbers that I wanted to share with you, and then we'll show you a map where all of our events are happening uh, throughout uh, 2020, okay? Now, next year, we will have 12 official industry events 
across the world, as I, and as I said, in emerging markets. And then the second number I wanted to share with you is the number of people that attend our events. So more than 110,000 attendees across all of, of course, GWEC events uh, from the local and global industry. So now let's uh, quickly take a look at where our events will be happening uh, next year. So from the left to the right, on the far left, we have the Latin American events. So Mexico Wind Power, Colombia, Argentina, and Brazil Wind Power. And uh, then we have, of course, on the top of, of the map, Wind Energy Hamburg. It's the biggest event in wind. Uh, and then on the bottom, Windaba in South Africa. And then over to the right, we have the Asian events. Uh, from the top to bottom, China Wind Power, almost uh, 65,000 uh, visitors. And then this year, we come with the Beijing Renewable Energy Investment Summit, which is already a huge success. If you have the opportunity to check the, uh, um, uh, the speaker lineup, you'll see that quite a lot of CEOs and high-level uh, participants are already scheduled to, to speak. And then we have uh, uh, three global offshore wind summits. So this is a brand that we brought uh, to uh, GWEC uh, members and to participants of our events uh, last year. So Japan, China, and uh, Taiwan. And then we close it with uh, Vietnam Wind Power and the Asia Clean Energy Summit. Okay. Now, uh, when are these events uh, happening next year? Let's take a look at the first uh, semester, okay? We have uh, five events in the first semester. We start off with uh, Mexico Wind Power in March, on to April with the Global Offshore Wind Summit, and then three events in June, uh, in the first two weeks of June. So Global Offshore Wind Summit China, then Brazil Wind Power, and then uh, we close the first semester with Vietnam wind power, okay? Now on to the second semester where we have a bit more events. So seven events in the second semester and uh, we start in September, uh, three events in September, Argentina, uh, our offshore wind summit in Japan and then Wind Energy Hamburg. Uh, we go on to South Africa with Windaba and then uh, the Beijing Renewable Energy Investment Summit, coupled with China Wind Power in October, Asia Clean Energy Summit, where we take care of the wind track, and then at the end of the year, Colombia Wind Power, okay? Now, uh, it's, uh, you're probably thinking of what kind of, of, of events are these? What are, what are the size of these events? How many people go to these events? If they're offshore or onshore? Of course, the offshore wind summits are essential. Uh, what we want to do now is actually give you a profile of, of these events so that you can uh, better understand the size of them and then prepare and plan yourselves or prepare your budgets to participate in our events uh, next year, okay? So before we go into act the actual profile, we categorized these events into uh, three different uh, uh, categories. So we have category one, which are seminar and conferences only, targeted to about two, 200 to 400 people. We have category two, a bit bigger, 500 to 800. Some of them have exhibitions within them, small exhibitions, but nevertheless, very interesting. And then we have the category three, the major industry events where we have conferences and exhibition that are aimed at more than a thousand people from uh, any, anywhere from 80 to uh, 1,500 events. And I'm talking about uh, um, uh, Wind Energy Hamburg. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the idea here is so that the uh, people that are in, involved in preparing the budgets and planning know exactly what kind of event to expect. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, the profile. Uh, now, from the, so numbers one, two, three, so from the left to the right, the event gets bigger. And then uh, the last column indicates if the, if the event is a partner event or if it's a GWEC event. So I'll quickly go down the list. Uh, uh, Mexico Wind Power, it's a partner event. Going on to the ninth edition, it's, a, um, it's an event with about 60 to 80 exhibitors, about 3,500 people. Uh, then we go on to two global offshore wind summits. Uh, we have uh, Taiwan, which is a category two. It's a GWEC 
event. Uh, same thing for China, but China actually we have to uh, um, recategorize because this only this this was the first 2019 was the first edition of the event with already 1,200 people participating in it. So uh, it's it's already a category three, but without uh, the conference, and it's a GWEC event. Okay. Then we have Brazil Wind Power. This edition was the 10th. Uh, uh, time that uh, the event was organized. It moved from Rio to uh, Sao Paulo. It's about 120 exhibitors and uh, 5,000 uh, visitors. Uh, then, uh, and it's a partner event. On to uh, Vietnam Wind Power and Argentina Wind Power. Both are category two events. Ambition, about 15 to 20 exhibitors of, of uh, space and Argentina Wind Power uh, already had an exhibition this year and we aim at uh, increasing this a bit more for next year and it was already a very successful event despite the uh, economical and political uh, situation that the com that the country is going through okay uh, now in Japan we organized our first edition of the global offshore wind summit uh, we've been uh, in uh, very interesting uh, conversations with the local wind power association everybody is very motivated for this event. The country is uh, very much engaged and involved in uh, pushing offshore uh, forward. So we expect to have a, a successful event uh, there as well. And then Wind Energy Hamburg, which I mentioned, it's the 1,500 exhibitors, about 35,000 uh, participants in this event. Uh, in South Africa, Windaba, it's a category two, a partner event. And closing the year, Beijing Renewable Energy Investment Summit, and uh, which uh, which is a conference. China Wind Power, a huge uh, ex exhibitor uh, ex exhibition, uh, which uh, which now coupled with the uh, which I just mentioned the Be Beijing Renewable Energy Investment Summit, and then the Asia Clean Energy Summit, where we are uh, in charge of the wind track and Colombia Wind Power, which is a one day uh, conference. Okay, so this is a um, uh, the the very this is information that we think is very important, very interesting, so that everybody can plan and and decide in which uh, events that uh, their company has to be in. And if you if your company has a stake in emerging market, in emerging markets, sorry, it's very important to uh, to gather the information that uh, I just uh, passed on to you until now so that you can start uh, planning your budgets uh, for, uh, for, for next uh, year's events and activities. Uh, now, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the, the, the first part, the end of the first part of my uh, presentation. Uh, so we'll now uh, talk a bit about uh, the different projects that we have uh, in GWEC that are planned for next year. All right, now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Joyce Lee, Policy and Operations Director, who will go over um, two of our projects that we have planned for 2020, which is the Women in Wind Global Leadership Program, as well as the London Energy Transition Dinner, which is set to take place on March 2020. Uh, Joyce, you can take it from here. Thanks very much, Alyssa, and thank you to Denny as well. Um, nice to have all of you join us today. My name is Joyce, and as mentioned, I'm the Policy and Operations Director here at GWEC, where I lead on the Women in, Women in Wind Global Leadership Program. So I'll be introducing Women in Wind to you all today, after which I will briefly touch on another event we're organizing in London called the London Energy Transition Dinner. Um, but first to Women in Wind. We launched Women in Wind in April of this year in partnership with the Global Women's Network for the Energy Transition. Uh, this is a program which aims to champion diversity and inclusion in the wind sector and in renewables writ large and increase the presence of women in senior, senior leadership positions in wind energy. We focus our participation on emerging markets for wind, many of which are in the global south, in Latin America, Asia and Africa. So compared to many diversity programs which are geographically bound to national associations, that means Women in Wind is serving as a steward for gender equality in the global wind industry 
and it emphasizes the key role which women have to play in the energy transition in line with SDG 5 for gender equality as well as SDG 7 for clean energy access. We do this through a multi-dimensional year-round framework which includes bilateral mentorships, a learning and development curriculum exercised across a series of exclusive webinars for participants, a study tour and conference in Europe in the fall, as well as an achievement ceremony which is held as a side event at the IRENA General Assembly in January. Underpinning all of these activities is a year-long online storytelling campaign which unfolds through mainstream and trade media as well as social media. I wanted to point out some of the highlights that we've achieved this year in raising visibility of the program in, in its inaugural year, uh, raising visibility to, to a global audience especially. Um, these include a recently launched global gender survey of the wind industry with IRENA, which is the largest such data gathering exercise to date and will provide an important empirical basis for diversity policies for policymakers as well as corporates in the future. We also submitted a statement on mainstreaming gender in national adaptation frameworks for climate change to the UNFCCC in the summer, and we've been designated as a UN SDG action partner for our upcoming study tour at the end of this month. Moving forward, we have our eye on how to keep making the program bigger and better and more impactful in 2020, so a few of our future potential milestones are listed here. To give a sense of our in-person activities, because uh, much of the program is conducted virtually, um, these are uh, opportunities for networking and visibility for our partners, um, and much of them are centered on the week-long study tour in Europe, which allows participants to gain international exposure and to gain a greater understanding of the lessons learned from mature wind markets. Um, so we'll be heading to Berlin and London at the end of this month to the first week week of October, um, during which some of our um, activities will include meetings with senior officials at GIZ in Germany, the International Development Agency, as well as the uh, Department of BASE, that's Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy in the UK, uh, or the equivalent of the Department of Energy or Energy Ministry in the UK. We've also secured attendance to a, a ministerial conference on system integration of renewables in Berlin, which is organized by the International Energy Agency and the German government. And we're making sure to visit the facilities of our supporting partners. So to that end, we'll be touring GE Power Conversion in Berlin, and we'll also be visiting the MHI Vestas Blade Manufacturing Facility in the Isle of Wight in the UK. Finally, the program culminates in an achievement ceremony with IRENA in January, where we will be including remarks from a keynote speaker as well as remarks from program partners. This is also going to be a chance for our participants to provide testimonials for the program and continue their learning and development by visiting Mazdar City in the UAE. There are plenty of communications opportunities throughout the year. Uh, that includes weekly updates and news on the blog, active social media channels, and very positive press uh, that we've secured about the program in mainstream and trade media so far. A few examples of those are illustrated here. We also frequently serve as speakers at industry panels about gender diversity, which provides a further boost to the program throughout the year. And something new for 2020 is that we'll be opening up spots at GWEC events for panels on both industry topics as well as gender diversity topics to female representatives from our program partners as well. So our inaugural year has kindly been sponsored by MHI Vestas, Mainstream Renewable Power, as well as GE Renewable Energy. We've received very strong positive feedback from these partners so far. Um, they've commented that their internal response to the program has been tremendous, that there's a consistent pipeline of marketing and thought leadership opportunities. Our partnerships are divided into two tiers, leading and supporting, and there are different benefits for each tier. I want to highlight that what sets partnerships for this initiative apart is the year-round communications loop across multiple platforms. So that includes industry panels, social media, in-person tours, and so on. And this ensures that partner involvement is highlighted in different interesting ways throughout the year. This is also a program which reaches across the areas of business development in emerging wind markets, corporate social responsibility, human resources, marketing and branding, as well as talent recruitment and retention. And this presents multiple imperatives for companies to get involved in this agenda and use the program as a global platform to share their initiatives and their stories. 
If you are interested in learning more, uh, we have a fuller deck with more details available upon request, and I'm also happy to take any questions uh, or schedule a call with anyone to discuss the program further. And while I have the floor, I'm going to move to an exciting new event for 2020, which Denny mentioned. That's the London Energy Transition Dinner. So we've just begun discussions for this event, but have already been joined by MHI Vestas as a supporter, as well as Solar Power Europe, Renewable UK, and the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Partnership as associated partners. This event is being driven by the very urgent context of financing a 1.5 degree pathway. According to the IPCC, renewable energy will need to supply from 70 to 85% of electricity by 2050, and global investment will need to multiply from around half a billion USD per year to 2.4 trillion USD per year by that time. So this event is aiming to bring together a high level network of actors in the energy transition with a focus on financing clean energy. It will take place on the evening of March 25th in London, and this is just before the Resource UK conference in London, which ensures that there's going to be a strong presence of stakeholders active in corporate renewable sourcing at the dinner. In terms of objectives, uh, this event aims to be solutions oriented with a focus on driving capital to key technologies in the energy transition. So that does include onshore and offshore wind, but it also includes solar power, storage, as well as demand side response. And the event also highlights the need for oil majors to build their positions in renewable energy. It's going to provide opportunities for B2B matchmaking, networking, as well as corporate visibility um, for attendees as active influencers in the energy transition, um, with an audience that includes developers and OEMs in clean energy, policymakers, senior level officials of international institutions, banks and funds active or seeking to invest in renewables, as well as large corporate renewable customers. And London, um, just to mention, is a fitting backdrop for the event as the UK is hosting COP26 next year. So the event's also going to serve to highlight the UK's global leadership in climate action. In terms of format, uh, the event is going to be a formal dinner for around 250 invite-only attendees at an impactful and thematic venue such as the Natural History Museum or the Tate Modern in London. There will be a cocktail reception to kick off the evening, during which someone will give a keynote speech, and we're seeking to bring in a high-level representative from government and or COP26 uh, to fill that role. After um, guests proceed to dinner, they'll have a starter and main course, after which there's going to be an on-stage conversation between key actors. So these actors so far will include Dr. Eddie O'Connor, who's the chairman and founder of Mainstream Renewable Power, as well as the founder of Supernode. Uh, Philippe Cavafian, the CEO of MHI Vestas, as well as two to three to be confirmed participants. And moderating this conversation will be Tina Davis, the managing editor of Energy and Commodities at Bloomberg US, uh, who will be a familiar face to anyone who follows um, Bloomberg TV. We also have other programming in the pipeline to ensure that the conversation is sustained beyond the evening, and they include a pre-event webinar with Imperial College London, a program booklet on the evening, and more. Overall, this dinner is going to be a unique opportunity to position a company at the forefront of the conversation on the energy transition and gain proximity to key partners, key investors, and champions of climate action. So our partners for this event have access to a number of branding, ticketing, and thought leadership channels, um, which are active before, during, and after the event, and which provide a range of exposure to high-level audience. Some of these branding initiatives um, are also aiming to actively engage attendees. So we have a few um, initiatives such as an idea wall and such as using seeded paper for the program, which can be planted in a garden after the evening. So there's going to be a chance to be involved in something fresh and something solutions oriented. Please do get in touch if you're interested in learning more and we'd be happy to set up a call with Denny and myself. So I'll just hand it back to Alyssa. Thank you, Joyce, for going over those two really exciting opportunities for next year. I'll now hand it over to Karen Olenforst, our Director of Market Intelligence, who will go through all the different uh, products we have with GWEC Market Intelligence um, and what we have planned for next year. Over to you, Karen. Thank you, Alicia, and uh, thank you, Joyce and, and Danny, for, for sharing your, your insights. Um, I'm heading the market intelligence at GVAC, and about a year ago, we started to um, 
put market intelligence in more of a program approach compared to, to what was done previously at GVEC. Um, so for one year now, we've been running a full-fledged program of market intelligence. And um, in the past 12 months, we have also detected um, opportunities to collaborate with you, with our members, um, with other entities on our market intelligence products. And uh, that's what I want to talk to you about uh, for, for 2020. Um, first of all, as you see, we are a, a team of uh, three people who um, take part in GVEX market intelligence. You heard Joyce, um, she's taking care of the policy side. And then there's also my colleague, um, Feng Xiao, our strategy director, who has a special spike towards the Chinese and, and the Asian markets. And um, when I said a, a program approach, you see here below the six boxes, which represent all the, all the um, topics and areas that we cover with, with our insights. Our rationale for this program approach um, is very simple. In GVEC, we believe that uh, you can take part in a discussion and drive a discussion by actually having the facts and the insights in place. Um, and that's what we do in, in market intelligence. We provide a market outlook on the development of the wind market globally and how its role changes. Um, we look in towards the area of policy and regulations, how that can drive or hinder actually the growth in our market. Um, we see uh, what it, uh, how the development and what are the trends of, uh, of the companies and the entities that actually own the wind assets. How are they changing? What are their challenges? Um, what are they looking ahead to? Um, we, of course, look also on the supply chain side and the technology, how that is going to impact uh, growth. Um, and of course, um, I mentioned that already, but in this whole chapter of energy transition, what the role is for wind and how we can provide more value as, as wind uh, becomes a mainstream or is a mainstream source of, of electricity. And finally, we also look at the part that we call maintenance, operation and maintenance, where it comes to how to manage, how to extend um, the lifetime of a project in, in a good way. So this is an overview of, of our program. Uh, for today, um, I want to highlight um, three of our, of our products, actually, that we have, um, which I believe um, give a great opportunity to collaborate with us. Um, let me start with the, with the left, and maybe that's also where some of you are familiar with. Um, the Global Wind Report is our annual flagship publication about the global wind industry. Um, that report has a tremendous reach um, to all areas, of course, within the, the community of, of wind energy, but also I think it's worth mentioning outside the community. Um, I'm talking here mainstream media, I'm talking here about academia, I'm talking here from a geographic point of view in all parts of the world. Um, in this publication, we take a look at what's the current status of our market, we take a look at what's the outlook on our market, and we look at what's the drivers or barriers of growth, and how is wind moving along in the energy transition. Um, this report is an excellent, excellent tool, I have to say, for, uh, for our partners to position themselves in this whole discussion about energy transition, in this whole discussion about providing solutions to drive growth in the, in the wind industry. Um, there are different opportunities here to, to collaborate, and uh, this actually applies for all of our products, and I'm happy to, to discuss that with you in a, in a more detailed way. But roughly, um, we host a webinar with, um, I think it's fair to say, with a fairly high share of attendance um, and a good mix of attendance, where our partners um, also have the opportunities to share their insights and to provide their perspective on things. Um, we, of course, have a section in the report um, where our partners can elaborate how they're tackling the energy transition and what their competencies are. And, of course, um, there's also further opportunities to use the report to position themselves um, in, in any type of, uh, of media outreach or media engagement. 
Um, moving on to a more specific publication, which is about the offshore wind. Um, offshore wind is a segment which we believe is really going to grow over the next years and um, not only in Europe, um, but become globally a driving force for wind energy. Um, based on that, um, we released our first global offshore wind report this year in June and uh, we are planning a next edition for, for next June, of course, um, where we are seeking a partner um, to help us promote the, the good opportunities for the global offshore wind industry. Um, the opportunities here to engage are similar to the to the global wind report um, you know it is to to position yourself to use the insights of the report um, for your for your own purposes um, and also to have a contribution to the report um, as a as a section um, as we've done in the global wind report um, this third product I want to highlight here today is what uh, is our Africa Handbook. That's a product that we are releasing over the next uh, weeks, um, early October. Uh, we start releasing it, which is actually, I think, a very cool tool to, uh, to engage with stakeholders, to share, um, especially with regulatory stakeholders in the African markets. Um, how to how wind actually works and the benefit of wind so it's a it's a um it's a it's a tool to uh, to do lobbying it's a tool to share insights on the industry um as that again i think this this handbook is a is a great tool to position yourself um and to uh position yourself as a as a knowledge or thought leader in this specific area um, I'm very happy to um, engage with you in closer discussion um, what opportunities we have with our market intelligence product. As I said in the beginning, uh, we in GVEC believe that uh, market intelligence facts and insights are an important basis for all the work that we are doing and uh, therefore I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for you to engage with us. Uh, with that, I'm handing over to Alicia again. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, so now you should all have a pretty good idea of what GWAC has planned in terms of events and projects for 2020. And I'll hand it over to Denny now to discuss how you can be involved and help shape these events and projects. Uh, before I do, I just want to remind you that if you have any questions so far or during the next portion of the webcast, to please submit them in the questions pane in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll address them in the Q&A session in uh, about 15 minutes. Over to you, Denny. Thank you very much, uh, Alyssa. Uh, thank you also, uh, Joyce, for all the information on uh, Women in Wind. It's, uh, I've been following uh, the, uh, the, the, the project this year. It's, a, it's hugely successful. Uh, and uh, also, I'm uh, very much looking forward to the London Energy Transition Dinner. I'm sure it's going to be a, a, a very interesting event and uh, and uh, and and for Karen for all the uh, uh, very important information on market intelligence and uh, which is uh, uh, which is information that uh, there's I, don't, I think that any company can uh, can can stay without uh, so now um, st stay with us a bit longer because uh, we, we are now going to explain um, how uh, all of you can get engaged, how your companies can engage with uh, the GWAC events and activities that were just uh, mentioned, what are the benefits, and, uh, and then we, we give you a, a bit of a, an idea of how much, uh, how much each of these costs and what's, what's the investment to, uh, to, have, uh, to unlock all of these uh, uh, interesting uh, opportunities that we have uh, lined up. So basically we have two different kinds of uh, sponsorships that we can offer in events. The, uh, the traditional sponsorships that, uh, that most of you have uh, know and, and, and have eventually have invested in. And then we bring to our uh, events, or actually to select events, uh, something that uh, uh, our members and our, and our participants in, in our events throughout the year have been asking about, uh, which is a, a comprehensive thought leadership uh, package uh, that uh, 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 that we that companies will be able to evaluate 
and uh, uh, invest in uh, in 2020. Okay, so first let's take a look at the traditional sponsorships. Um, what, what, what we have here are options for all budgets and, and, and obje objectives. Uh, and then what we're talking about are top tier opportunities. Then uh, we, we, what we see here are um, um, uh, op uh, situations where the companies can have uh, extreme visibility and also have support in business matchmaking and uh, uh, unlock possible and potential speaking opportunities and uh, also attendance at uh, some of our exclusive side events, okay? We also have different products that uh, you all know, like the lanyards, the water bottles, and of course, uh, uh, a, a chance to supply uh, uh, branded products from your uh, corporation, okay? And then, obviously, the, uh, the side events. Okay, uh, we have uh, exclusive side events that we organize uh, throughout the year. And then I think it's uh, very interesting to mention two uh, CEO lunches that we organized uh, this year in Brazil Wind Power, where uh, 23 market leaders uh, uh, participated. This was hosted by uh, GWEC uh, within the uh, uh, venue of, of the event. And uh, just recently, we organized uh, the, a, a uh, VIP lunch uh, during Argentina Wind Power, where 17 people participated, but that was hosted by the Danish ambassador. It actually happened at the Danish ambassador's residency and GWEC as well, okay? Uh, now, these are the traditional opportunities that you can work with. We're happy to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, um, schedule uh, meetings with any company that may be interested in for the uh, events uh, next year. We have detailed sponsorship packages for each one of the events uh, that are going to happen in 2020. And, we're ha and, and we can uh, set up uh, talks further uh, uh, after this webcast to, uh, to detail a bit more and to find also bespoke solutions that the companies might be uh, interested in, okay? And so that you have an idea of uh, the uh, investment, these opportunities range from uh, 2,500 to 15,000 euros, okay? And it's also really important to check the sponsorship package so that uh, you uh, know what are the full details of each option, okay? Now, moving on to what we think is uh, uh, the, um, the, um, the going to be a hit for uh, 2020, our uh, industry pioneer. Okay. Now, what can you unlock when uh, when you decide to be an industry pioneer in uh, in GWEC events? So here we have uh, visibility and branding, of course. Uh, we also will be able to offer you thought leadership and network building. Okay. So of course, in visibility, you'll associate your brand to the, all the different uh, um, uh, the different opportunities that we can offer you. Um, make sure that your brand is uh, is visible within all of the uh, industry leaders. Build brand awareness. Then, uh, it, it, when you talk about thought leadership, uh, your voice being heard, and, and where you be able to share your expertise in our conferences, and of course, all of the media and uh, editorial opportunities that uh, are part of uh, the thought leadership uh, um, um, unit of this uh, sponsorship, okay? Then of course, on to network building because uh, we, we, it's really important for our sponsors to take advantage of, of our extensive uh, network. And then of course, exclusive events that, uh, that we offer uh, uh, to these to our industry pioneers, which, uh, uh, which will, you'll be able to influence uh, key stakeholders. And when, when I mention uh, side events, um, uh, I, I think it's interesting to, to talk about the financing roundtables that uh, we organized this year in uh, Taiwan, uh, the investment summits, like I just mentioned in the beginning of our talk, the Beijing Renewable uh, Energy Investment Summit, and uh, even capacity building workshops, uh, like the one that we organized uh, in Vietnam uh, this year. So now what we're going to do is just go a bit further into each one of these uh, three options. Uh, there's no need to, to go into a, a lot of details, but before I go on, just to mention that uh, uh, the industry pioneer is initially available in three uh, major industry events next year, which are Mexico, Brazil, 
and China. But of course, if the company is interested in being an industry pioneer in one of the other events, we're more than happy to set up a talk to find a, a, an option uh, for your organization. Okay, so a bit of a further look on visibility and branding. So there's quite a lot of that's going to happen uh, as, as a as pre-event. And then we have a, a number of different uh, activities uh, during the event and of course post event so you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to uh, um, um, place your brand in the different uh, 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 products that GWEC has promote uh, uh, the, the brand within all of the uh, within the, the, the different uh, opportunities that we have we uh, we the, the speakers that uh, uh, that we include in our conference are also uh, visible so that's our exposure for uh, for for your professionals, and then of course a, a number of different activities that happen uh, uh, when the event is actually happening, and then there's a number of of of, of uh, opportunities that uh, we bring to the industry pioneer after the event is over. Okay, then uh, the content package of the um, of the sponsorship also has pre-event, uh, uh, during the event and post-event activities. Uh, as um, Alyssa mentioned, the, the document will be available for download, so uh, you'll be able to uh, have a look at all of these uh, different opportunities and, uh, and easily find out if this sponsorship is uh, fits into uh, your objectives for next year, okay? And then we go on to network building. So taking advantage of all the stakeholders and uh, and and the and industry professionals and uh, market leaders that will be present at the event, uh, it's uh, it's very important uh, to be able to uh, connect with uh, the the right people and of course further your business uh, wherever possible. And I think uh, this uh, this package goes uh, uh, exactly to uh, to what. Uh, the, the market is expecting within uh, GWEC events to go even a bit further as, uh, as uh, uh, further than compared to the traditional sponsorships that companies are used to, okay? And again, an idea of investment range, so between 25 and 35K, okay? Now, we, uh, um, Joyce mentioned about the uh, uh, women in wind, uh, I don't think there's a need to detail all of the uh, opportunities and the different benefits that uh, that sh uh, that she already uh, uh, mentioned. But uh, there's a view here. There's a very comprehensive view of what uh, each uh, partner can uh, can benefit from uh, when they decide to become uh, to come on board Women in Wind. So there's basically two different uh, uh, partners. So we have the leading partner and the supporting partner and on the top uh, right-hand corner, you have uh, the uh, the investment, and the table here has each one of the different uh, platforms that uh, will be available. The duration of, of the uh, of the platform that's within the uh, the project uh, Women in Wind and the benefits, and of course the uh, what's uh, what is included in each one of the uh, investments. Okay, then of course. Um, just mentioned about the London Energy Transition Dinner. Uh, we have uh, uh, here the uh, our, our supporters uh, and uh, and the companies that are already associated or the associations that are already with us. And you see in the top right hand corner the uh, uh, investment. Okay, and uh, we uh, we had very interesting information that uh, Karen shared with us about the market uh, intelligence. And here we have two different opportunities that the companies can work with. So um, as we mentioned, the flagship report, the global uh, win report that uh, we launched this year uh, in uh, Bilbao during uh, 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 an exhibition and conference that was organized by Wind Europe. We had the leading sponsor in Hetiam and the uh, supporting sponsor, Wind Energy Hamburg. And uh, of course, companies can evaluate this opportunity for next year. And uh, this uh, will be, uh, we have a very interesting package uh, for the companies that decide to sponsor the Global Win Report. And 
We also have the uh, Global Offshore Wind Report, which is uh, also very interesting opportunities for the companies that are heavily involved in offshore or or uh, uh, supply chain uh, 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 in, in industries that uh, want to uh, get in, engaged or want to raise their profile and place themselves in a global, uh, uh, more of a global uh, perspective and associate them uh, to associate themselves to this uh, very world-class uh, content that uh, comes out from our market intelligence uh, uh, unit. Okay, and again, an idea of investment. We have here two levels of investment, as I mentioned, the leading sponsor and the supporting sponsor. Okay, and a uh, bit more of information just so that you understand what happens when the company uh, when, or an organization decides to uh, sponsor one of our reports. We have uh, a pre-launch uh, um, activities and of course launch activities also included uh, and then i can mention the uh, a pr campaign a press conference during the the event and then we select a major industry event to actually launch the uh, the uh, the global wind report and of course the offshore report as well okay and this was the uh, information that uh, i wanted to uh, share with you in terms of uh, of cost and uh, cost ranges uh, i hope that uh, this uh, the, the the details that we shared here were uh, were interesting. Um, we hope that uh, this helps the uh, our members and non-members to uh, plan themselves for for next year. And uh, I will now pass it on to Alyssa, uh, the, and uh, she will open our Q and A session. Thank you, Denny. Um, so now we'll open the Q&A session. We'll have about uh, 12 minutes here for some questions. If you haven't submitted your questions already, please do so now using the questions pane in your GoToWebinar panel. I'll pick up the first question we have here, um, which is from Dirk, and he asks, will the Market Insights reports be made available to non-members of GWEP2? Um, so Karen, maybe I'll let you address this one and kind of go over in a bit more detail who um, can access the reports and how our market intelligence works. Yes, um, thank you, Alicia. Um, our market intelligence, the full service of market intelligence is only available to our GVEC members. Um, that, is, uh, that is correct. Um, however, um, we have... Um, certain publication, among them the Global Wind Report, um, the Global Offshore Report, and the Africa Handbook, uh, where we say this is so important and we know that we can reach so many stakeholders with these publications that we make them available to the wider public. Um, especially, as I mentioned, the Global Wind Report has a, has a great outreach. Um, for the Global Offshore Report, what we did this year was that we had a more extended version, a lengthy and detailed version to our members, um, and then had a public version, as we called it. Um, and uh, the setup here is, is also to be, uh, to be discussed how it works best with our, with our partner. Um, for the handbook, um, we, uh, we, uh, we are launching a website uh, where the material is, is available. So it's a virtual handbook, um, but it is, as I said, available to, to the general public and therefore also a great opportunity to partner with us. Thank you, Karen. Uh, we have a question now here about our Women in Wind Go to Full Leadership Program. Um, so do companies get to participate in the actual program, such as attend the study tour, the mentorships and the webinars? Um, I'll pass this one on to you, Joyce, to go into a bit more detail about how uh, the partners can be involved in the program for Women in Wind. Sure, thanks, Alyssa. So our uh, supporting and our leading partners do get to participate uh, in multiple ways. Um, for mentorships, we do uh, have our partners nominate a mentor and a mentee each. So for example, uh, Mainstream Renewable Power is a supporting partner of this year's program. They have nominated uh, one of their senior female leaders to serve as a mentor, that's Mary Coiney, and they've nominated uh, one of their female employees, Marcia Grimbeek, to serve as a mentee. And that, um, that 
tandem option is available for each of our partners. Um, they can also feed into other parts of the program. Um, I mentioned that we have a learning and development curriculum, which is uh, which includes a series of knowledge transfer webinars, um, which are held exclusively for participants. We are drawing our webinar speakers and panelists from a pool of uh, senior female leaders in the industry across the value chain, but often we do return to our partners to see if they might have someone suitable um, to speak on a certain industry topic, such as technological innovation or offshore wind. Um, and this provides them platform to uh, showcase that their company's thought leadership. Uh, we also include um, partner stops on our European study tour in the fall. So as mentioned, we are visiting GE Power Conversion in Berlin. We're also visiting MHI Vestas' um, blade manufacturing facility in the UK. And uh, our partners will be invited to, um, communi to uh, input communications to other uh, aspects of the program, which range from our blog. So we have Q and A's from each of our mentors and mentees on our blog. We also post partner um, content on our blog and at uh, events such as our program launch or at um, our upcoming achievement ceremony at the IRENA General Assembly, we'll have our partners deliver remarks um, to an audience. So there, it's really multiple channels where partners um, can be active, mentorship, learning and development, and, and the in-person aspects of the program. Thank you very much, Joyce, for going into detail about that. Um, I have a question about our events. Um, someone is asking, what is a typical profile of attendees that we have at GWAC events? Who comes to them and, and who participates in the speaking slots, for example, on our side events? So I'll let you take this one, Denny. Thank you very much, uh, Alyssa. So uh, basically what uh, we see in our, the profile of the uh, participants of our events are uh, major industry leaders, uh, government authorities, uh, people that are in charge of regulatory bodies and uh, also market uh, professionals. Uh, I know that uh, we, we have this uh, question that is asked quite frequently is how can we uh, be a part of the conference uh, program? So uh, uh, initially the uh, conference program is the opportunities are open for uh, our members to, uh, to, to engage and to share their uh, uh, experience and, and knowledge. Uh, but we do evaluate other opportunities that come in. Of course, if, uh, if this, uh, the industry professional has a uh, high uh, um, uh, knowledge in his, in his field, we uh, evaluate the opportunity. And of course, if it, uh, if it fits into the conference program, we uh, are happy to, uh, to give uh, the, the, uh, the, the company an opportunity to share the, uh, the information. I think the, the idea behind uh, uh, the conference program is to, uh, it's to balance the uh, content and very high level speakers so that uh, the participants uh, have a very, uh, uh, very good experience and uh, prepare themselves to come back uh, next in next year's edition of the event. Thank you, Denny. And just have, we'll have one final question here just to wrap up the, the webcast and the Q&A. And it's again for you, Denny, about GWEC events. And someone is just wondering, um, how can we know what types of opportunities are available at each different GWEC event and in each different market? Well, for uh, each of the uh, uh, events, we uh, prepare a we prepare a sponsorship package that has all of the uh, different opportunities that uh, are available in that uh, specific event or in that specific uh, e and for that specific emerging market. And uh, um, uh, please don't hesitate to to get in touch with us to request this uh, this package uh, or to uh, set up a, a, a call. Uh, so that we can go down the different opportunities and match these this a specific opportunity to your uh, to your objective uh, to to the uh, to the business uh, objective that you have in a in an emerging market and uh, and we're happy to fine tune this solution so that it uh, it, it it attends uh, uh, your your goals and also fits within your budget. Thank you, Denny. Thank you to all of our speakers and to everyone who attended today's webcast. You will receive a follow-up email within 24 hours with a link to view the recording of today's webinar. And if you haven't 
sub submitted a question today, which wasn't answered, we will follow up by email, or please feel free to get in touch with Danny or any of my other colleagues about um, participating in any of GWEC's activities and events uh, next year. On behalf of GWEC, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to working together for next year's events and activities to bring wind energy to new markets around the world. All done. Done? No. Okay.